Good morning, friends. Hello. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny, and here we are for our weekly nursery tour. It is first thing on Saturday morning. Um, so we are going to be open here in just a little bit. But before we open, I thought it would be fun to walk through the nursery to show you what is available and growing and blooming and thriving this week here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina. Um, so you might see some folks moving around because we are going to get ready for being open today. We have had a fantastic week. We have had folks coming from all over to see us this week. Remember, we're only open on Thursdays through Saturdays, 9 to 4. But we've had folks from West Virginia and Connecticut and Ohio and all sorts of great places, Virginia, like everywhere. Um, and so people have been coming to see us, which has been fantastic. And the plants are flying out of here. Yesterday, which was Friday, we had two separate truck deliveries. Um, I wish the cameras had been rolling because, oh my word, y'all, it was, whew, it was just like a TV show. We had one come in, great, little box truck, got him unloaded, no problem. Then we had the sleeper cab 18-wheeler come in. He was a little iffy on how he wanted to proceed, so he sat in the gate for about 20 minutes, finally made his way down here, almost ended up in the creek. I just let Jerry handle the whole thing. It was quite an adventure. But the good news is he brought us lots of gorgeous shrubs and some perennials that I cannot wait to show you. So without further ado, let's get going. And I will try my best to remember to um, show you tags and names and all of that. But remember, if you see something or hear something and you need some more information about it, just go to Professor Google, very smart little creation, and it will tell you everything you ever needed to know. Um, the hydrangeas are waking up from their winter slumber. Here we have, look at this, it's a beautiful from first editions. This is the strawberry sundae. It is a panicle hydrangea. It's beautiful. It will start out a creamy white and then it turns that pink, hence the name Strawberry Sunday. So remember, panicles are wonderful because they bloom on new growth. So if you ever see a panicle hydrangea or a paniculata would be the um, scientific name, they are wonderful. Those are like the cone shaped, bloom on new growth. You can see they have been pruned very nicely, so you can keep them a manageable shape, kind of wherever you want to, and you're guaranteed blooms every year. It's fantastic. Um, we got in some, <laughs> got in some butterfly bushes and some great um, hydrangeas last week, I guess it was. Well, this time last week, it was 28 degrees out here. So they had some new growth on them when we got them and then they got kind of fried. So I want to show you just as a little tutorial in case this has happened to your plants so that you know it's okay and don't freak out. So here we have the Pugster butterfly bushes. Pugsters are wonderful. They're a little two by two, love the full sun, but you can clearly see there's been some damage. So what happened is we got these from a nursery. They had new growth on them. They had either been in a greenhouse or under some sort of covering, um, but they weren't out in the elements. So their new foliage really wasn't hardened off yet. So then the next day when it came here and we hit 28, 27 degrees, it literally fried the tops off. Now, that's just the new foliage. It did not kill the plant. It's not gonna kill the plant. It simply just zaps back that tender new foliage. You can have, you have two options. One, you can leave it alone. It's fine. The plant will regenerate new growth and be happy. Or you can come in and start just kind of snipping off that dead foliage. Either way, it's okay. I do wanna show you too though, I'm talking about hydrangeas. Look at these. This is one of those you could say, bless your heart, right? So here we have Proven Winners, <clears throat> City Line, Paris, um, Hydrangea. Do you see all this brown? That's the foliage that got zapped. So you can just come in and just pull it right off, and then the new growth is underneath. It's fine. Don't freak out. It's okay. You've got new green growth in there. But I just want to let you know, even at a nursery, these things happen. We cannot control the, um, the weather or the temperatures. Some things just happen, and you go with the flow. All right, let's move on because I want to show you some of these great things that we got. Um, a lot of them are down here by the, um, the creek, of course. So an example, these autumn fires from Encore Azalea, they came in, they were in that same exact shipment 
of those plants, all of their blooms that were currently out got fried, but look, they're beautiful. They recovered nicely. All that new blooms have come out. It was just the blooms that were currently out that got fried. The buds were fine. Look, all that nice green growth, it's fantastic. Remember your Encore Azaleas will bloom three times a year, spring, summer, fall. We love Autumn Fire because it is a nice petite one. It has these gorgeous red blooms and the foliage will be nice and dark. Beautiful. And it's, it's not, like I said, it's not a massive one. The Encores come in all different shapes and colors and sizes. Um, really fun. Here we have a new gardenia. Let's see. We were putting the irrigation stakes in them. But look at this. Look how fun this one is. This is a great gardenia. Of course, gardenias are synonymous with the South. This is called Snow Puff. Just a fantastic gardenia, beautiful pure white blooms. Again, you can, if you're looking for smells in your garden, you cannot beat a gardenia. But they are, like I said, in those southern zones, they like it hot. So unfortunately for my northern folks, um, I guess you get your lilacs and we get our gardenias. So there you go. There's a little give and take on both of them. But coming over here, I want to show you um, we have the Formosa azaleas, the George Tabor azaleas. So these are those great classic azaleas that are more shade loving than like the Encores. Encores are full sun. These guys are shade loving and they will get nice and big and of course give you those gorgeous blooms in the springtime. Um, down here, the birds are going nuts. I don't know if you can hear them through my mic, but they are just going crazy. Um, so this is autumn bonfire. So we had autumn fire. Now this is autumn bonfire. Again, a beautiful red bloom of a, of a hydrangea. This is not a hydrangea. This is an azalea. So let's flip it over. It is going to be three feet high, three and a half feet wide. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than um, the autumn fire. And just again, beautiful red, has like a, like a dent, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a double bloom on it. Beautiful bright green foliage. Love them and they are gorgeous. Then we got Pugster Periwinkle. How fun is this? This is a happy plant right here. So remember the Pugsters are all nice and petite. They're gonna be a two by two. They love the full sun. They love to be neglected. They don't like to be fertilized. They don't like to have their soil amended. Um, they hate to have wet feet. So if you've got a hot, dry spot, it's perfect for a butterfly bush. And these pugsters are great because they are petite, so they can go you know, on the edge of a sidewalk, somewhere you need something short. They can even go into a nice, large pot. They will do fantastic, and they can overwinter there and be very happy. So this is periwinkle. Um, we're gonna meander our way back this way over here. Now this is fun. So if you can see, we have this whole kind of height thing going on over here. We were able to get our hands on some clematis. Now, again, you say clematis, I say clematis. Tomato, tomato. You know what I'm talking about. Um, there's, I believe, four different varieties of clematis in here. This is the, um, the Guernsey cream. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Just a beautiful cream, nice big blooms on it. Now remember, with all your clematis, obviously they are trailers. So they are a climber. They go up. Depending on the variety will give you the different, um, I'll give you the tag here because I know y'all like to see the names. Um, depending on the variety will depend on the maximum height of it. Now, this one is going to be eight feet tall, two feet wide. Clematis love full sun, but they like to have cool feet. So what that means is you will need to um, plant something around the base of your clematis to provide shade for its roots. So it can be a little tricky sometimes finding the exact spot for it, but if you can find that sweet spot for your clematis, they will give you years and years and years of beautiful flowers. For example, um, we have in here Henry I. Come over here, Jerry, right quick if you don't mind. This is Henry I. 
clematis. Now, it is not blooming right now, but Henry I is an example of one that will just continue to go for years and years. It is a massive, pure white bloom. My mama has one of these at her mailbox. So you have to pass her mailbox in order to get to the nursery. And every spring when it starts to bloom, people are like, what is that? I want it, do you have it? Well, now I can say, yes, I have it. Quantities are limited, but this thing is just a massive showpiece. Her clematis is actually older than I am. So I'm, how am I, 42, 43? And so she brought that clematis when they first got married, so it has moved, it's been in that mailbox ever since they moved into that house in 1977, and it is still there and going strong. So. Clearly, this is a great, reliable clematis. So we've got that. Then there's a one right here, Jerry, that was blooming, starting to bloom. If white is not your, your preference, this is Niobe. We're gonna go with that. Here's the name. A beautiful, clearly a dark, deep red, kind of a Merlot, burgundy color really beautiful and then if you want a variegated one with pink and white then here is dr rupel we'll say that and you can see that it is full of buds not blooming yet remember clematis like any other plant will bloom at different times depending on the variety you'll have early mid and late bloomers clearly the guernsey is an early bloomer henry eye is going to be a later bloomer because it doesn't even have any buds on it yet so if you have spaces for different clematis, you can get an early, a mid, and a late and have blooms for long periods of time. So those are the clematis. Next, we have these fantastic um, tree form roses. Now, all of these are gonna be the exact same, so we'll come over here so Jerry can get to it a little bit easier. This is, let me move, oh, it has thorns, so it'll grab you. Um, this is Julia Child. It has a beautiful, strong rose fragrance. You can see, I mean, it is a nice size already. Now, because it is a tree form, it's gonna be perfect for gardens of all different sizes. So whether you only have a small patio space, then this would be wonderful. Put it in a large pot, it will do fine. Um, if you have, you know, a big open space and you want a you know, highlight to go in the center of a bed, again, this would be a beautiful one. It already has some buds coming up. It's going to be kind of a nice apricot, um, buttery color. And it says actually on the back that Julia loved the butter gold of this beautiful uh, Floribunda. So it is had nice mounded habit, really a great specimen piece. When we saw these, I was like, Jerry, where can I put this because just so excited so it might end up somewhere but then again it may sell out really fast and I don't know but anyway all right hanging baskets of course we have you saw us pot up these hanging baskets this is one of the recipes this is the charmed life they are coming along quite nicely so we have these out for people to purchase we have them hanging in the pergola we got some new signs put up it's only been a year in the making, you know, we'll, we'll get there. But Megan from Proven Winners came to see us last year before COVID hit and helped us create signage specific to Creekside to help our customers. So these are this table right here has probably been the most popular since we've put it up, but it tells you how to create a container on your own so you know how to plant like a pro of course you have your thriller filler spiller it gives you everything that you need to know and then of course we have put the plants in so these are going to be like your thrillers thrillers kind of go into your fillers and then fillers go into spillers obviously this is not the only plants that can go here we've got tons of the petunias and the calabricoas that's what um our sweet folks are doing right now they're grabbing more plants and gonna bring it down for us so we can have those and then of course over here we have the um, pollinator section so pollinators are a huge deal obviously for good reason so this section will have plants that are going to attract your hummingbirds your butterflies 
your honeybees, all of those great pollinators that we have. Look at this. This is um, the rockin' fuchsia salvia. I'll try to hold it still. Look at that color. If you're looking to attract hummingbirds and pollinators, I mean the honeybees love these things, then you can't go wrong with the rockin' series of salvias. So this is the fuchsia. She is blooming now. Um, also, my, one of my absolute favorites is the blue suede shoes. If you will remember when we did the wheelbarrow, we planted the wheelbarrow last summer here at the nursery, this is what was in the back. And the butterfly, butterflies rather, and the hummingbirds could not stay off of this thing. The rockin' series of salvias will get nice and big. So you wanna put them in a large container or the landscape. By the end of the season, I mean, they're gonna be every bit of two and a half feet tall. So nice and big, and they just continually go and go and go and go. So we've got all of those. Give you a little update on the grill because I know that a lot of you were loving the idea of the grill. So it's, it worked out, but of course they bloomed at different times, which is okay, right? So the red tulips, like this was like the very first one that bloomed. Well, she's done, so I probably just need to clip her. But here we have the red tulips, the orange tulips, and then the yellow tulips. Again, this was just a fun little cheeky thing that I did. We had tulips left over from our fall sales, and I was like, oh, this would be fun. So we put those in there, and they had the little, you know, the little flame tips. So that's great, but you can see, look at the echinacea. The echinacea, this is um, Lakota Fire um, from Proven Winners, and it is coming back quite nicely in there. It's currently covered in pollen because dear heavens, the pollen has been awful this week. Um, but they're coming, so I think what I'm gonna do, obviously when the tulips are done, I will yank them out and then I will put, again, some really fun um, annuals in here. I think I might do some like red verbena so the red will be spilling over. Lots of great options. Um, just some, a fun thing to play with. All right, coming across. Now these are fun. And Jerry, I don't even know what these are called. Fern spray. Fern spray. All right. So this is a, right. It's been created as a tree. This is um, just a really unique focal point, specimen point to put in your garden. Just fun and funky. So Jerry saw them. He grabbed two of them. So we have them here at the nursery. Um, Again, if you are one of those that loves the fun and the funky and the different, then this definitely would qualify for that. Here we have the Solomon Seal is coming up. Now Solomon Seal is a perennial. Of course, the weeds are coming up also. This is, oh, this is vetch. This stuff goes everywhere. We'll get that out of there. But Solomon Seal is a great perennial that will spread by rhizomes. It's not an invasive spreader, um, but you, it, it is a great naturalizer. So every couple of years, you can thin it out and move it to different places. Love this because it does those sweet little bell, white bell-shaped um, blooms on the bottoms of the arches. This is a great one to have. So if you can find, the, this is variegated Solomon seal. They tend to be more shade tolerant. This will stay in the shade until the very end of the afternoon and then it will get some sun. This was one of those where I was like, I don't know if it gets hot afternoon sun. I wasn't sure how well it was gonna do. When I actually planted it, I planted it more up in this area. Obviously this is kind of the top of the hill. The dry creek bed is wetter. So the plant has naturally moved down and out so where it is more wet so i'm just going to let it go because it's beautiful it's going to go it will go where it's happy there you go um, everything is starting to come back beautifully we've got some um are these silver kings silver king euonymus so let me show you the tag because i know you sweet people love your tags now this is a great evergreen it's very heavy <laughs> great evergreen shrub that is obviously has beautiful variegated foliage on it again you know look it up on professor google to get all the information but these can get nice and big if you allow them you can create a hedge of them you can have this as a specimen focal point really kind of a low-key maintenance um, it is hardy in zone two zone six and will ultimately go to six feet tall three feet wide just really really pretty Look at all the ferns 
The painted ferns have come back to life from their winter slumber. These were all outside all winter. We let them overwinter outside, but look at that. Just gorgeous, again, perennial fern for the shade, nice and low. It will be deciduous, so in the winter time, it goes away. The hostas are waking up. Again, hostas will come back to life at different rates. So here we have, this is Touch of Class, a beautiful variegated hosta. She is coming back and is quite happy. Some of them are a little bit slower. It's all right. They all come back at different times. Do what? And they're not small. So these are two gallon containers. Um, so you can see the difference between, this is a two gallon and this is a one gallon. And remember with your perennials, you're buying, the main thing that you're focusing on is your roots. Because if you have a big, huge, massive root system, then you're gonna have a big, huge, massive plant up top. So these are fantastic. Um, they're just all coming back. Look at the, um, this is the sum and substance. Sum and substance is, remember with your hostas, the lighter the color, oh, the geese are flying. I don't know if you can hear them honking. There they go. Sorry, I get distracted by the birds. Sum and substance is a nice light lime green color. The lighter the color of your hosta, the more sun it can take. So this actually, I have it in the ground, can get lots of that hot afternoon sun and it does okay to a point, right? Now, your dark blue hostas, they need the shade. So they can have some morning sun, but they don't like that hot, intense afternoon sun. Um, everything is coming up. Oh, let's go over here, Jerry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was my fault. Why don't you go that way, and I'll come this way? Because in that order yesterday, this was fun. This is white by the gate camellia. So obviously it has been put on a trellis to form um, this great trellised camellia. White by the gate is a japonica. So we know it's a japonica because it has these big, huge, fat leaves on it. Japonicas will bloom really kind of starting January through the early spring. White by the gate has huge, massive, double, pure white blooms. Positively stunning. So if you're looking for a unique piece, you might want to consider this white by the gate. Um, we had some folks yesterday that got one and they're gonna put it in like to help block their air conditioning unit. So that is gonna be a great option for them. So that is how they're gonna use it. Um, we can go that, 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 back this way. Poor thing. Jerry's, um, being a camera person for me is not always the easiest because I'm just kind of like ah, all over the place and it's trying to, it's like trying to film a hummingbird. You know, they never stay in one spot. They just are constantly moving. Um, another great option for you shade folks is these are gold dust Akubas. Akubas are a gorgeous shade loving evergreen shrub. Um, they have these beautiful kind of variegated leaves on them. You can see all this light green growth up here at the top is new foliage. They will, relatively a slow grower, get nice and big. Again, great structure for the shade garden. Just a beautiful plant. Also, we got in finally, oh, I love how they did this, the Florida Sunshines. Florida Sunshines are a type of anise. Again, shade loving. They are this beautiful evergreen, bright yellow, limey green color. They do fantastic. They're gonna be in that about four foot range ultimately when they get nice and big and mature. But again, a great option for you shade folks because I know in the shade sometimes it obviously tends to be a little bit darker. You need a bright pop of color. These are great. Um, and then because they are a type of anise in the early spring, they're gonna bloom little teeny tiny white flowers and they'll have that kind of that licorice smell. Um, so definitely known for their foliage, but they will bloom. And then for my shade folks who um, need some annual color in their containers, the Double Impatience. This is the Rocapuco series from Proven Winners. They have a whole line of them and they're positively gorgeous. This is Coral Reef. Coral Reef is one of the earlier bloomers. Just a gorgeous, 
pink, corally pink color. Again, double impatient. They are shade loving. They can handle some morning sun, but then they need a break from that hot afternoon sun. They do great in the landscape or containers. So they're very versatile. Of course, with a double impatient or impatience in general, they do not like to dry out. So you're going to want to make sure that you have consistent water on them. And since they are such a massive bloomer, you'll have to use your um, Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer on them when you're doing your petunias and your other flowering annuals. You'll need to fertilize these also in order to keep up these massive blooms. But there is the Coral Reef. Then there is Wisteria which is a beautiful kind of a, a purple and white, kind of a milky bicolor. That's a beautiful one. And then we have other ones, but here is Apple Blossom. Also, Apple Blossom is a really delicate pink. Very, very light pink, is beautiful. Then there is white, there's rose, which is a darker pink. Um, just great options. Okay, I have one more thing that I wanna show you. I think we'll end up doing a video on this, but I've been waiting for a long time to show you and Jenny just doesn't deal well with waiting. So come on, we're gonna end over here. A couple of, gosh, maybe a month or so ago, I posted this picture on social media of, this is a refrigerator. This is an old refrigerator that a friend of mine gave me. And obviously this is like the top, the door, and then that's the bottom. And she was like, Jenny, can you use this refrigerator? And I was like, well, Lacey, I don't know exactly how I can use it, but yes, I will take it. So what we did is obviously we laid it down on its side. We drilled holes through it so it has drainage and I turned it into a planter. You know that I love reusing old stuff in funky new ways. I did it with my wheelbarrow, I did it with my grill, and now we have an old refrigerator. So all the plants that are in here, minus the wee hosta, all of these plants, a Japanese painted fern, this is drinking gourd hosta, lady in red fern, and then this is still be. All of those plants were in one shallow, I'm gonna say shallow, is only like that deep, round pot. I planted it probably four years ago, and all of the plants were small, one gallon plants. And I knew that this would not last long term, but I was like, well, we're just gonna go with it, it was great, so I did. Two years ago, I was like, I really need to take these out so I can let them grow. Well, you know how life gets. It just gets away from me. I never did. This pot was one of the biggest showpieces out here in the pines because people would see it and it was just absolutely stunning, especially this drinking gourd hosta. So when Lacey gave me this refrigerator, I was like, this is gonna be the perfect thing. So I had to literally break the pot to get the plants out. It was either break the pot or break the plants. And I was like, I'm gonna sacrifice the pot. So here we go. Um, it is going to fill in. They have just started waking up. The astilbe was first. I did add that wee hosta in there. But you can see once this drinking gourd really fully opens up, it may even be too big to go into this container right now. But it is gonna be stunning. I love it. And then, um, of course, the lady in red fern will get nice and big. The Japanese painted fern is low and wide and will fill in this whole area. But look, like this is where the little eggs were. So that you can still flip that. Look at that, isn't that fun? And then of course, this was the freezer. So that is still open, you can use that. And then finally is, this was the little produce drawer and my daddy drilled some, me some holes in it and then screwed it down into the, the base of the refrigerator. And I'm gonna put flowering annuals in here. So we'll have flowers in here. And then of course, this gorgeous um, refrigerator filled with these wonderful shade perennials. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today because we've got to get ready for all of our sweet customers that are on their way. Um, as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. If there were some plants that you saw that you want more information on, of course, just go to um, Google, type in the name. If you need some clarification on what the name is, just let me know in the comments below and I will, I will do that for you. Remember, these nursery tours are a one-take wonder. Jerry's just simply following me around with the camera and we're filming and then we just go and upload it. So this is real life, unedited. Everything is as it seems. But as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.